universe from transport in plants to going back to human beings now? questions help us give focus to every system that we look at. Because really, they're doing the same thing over and over. Yeah? Uh, the next system is going to be the urinary system. We're going to learn about how we make urine. Okay? Um, if, all, if all goes well, we may even get to dissect kidneys. Not your own, sorry. Um, not human ones either. Sheep kidneys. Okay? Oh, all goes well. Yeah. But then uh, kidneys tend to be very smelly because they are after all the site where urine is yeah? So you're going to be like slicing and then uh, sheep urine will come out everywhere. Oh. Hey, rest part now. Okay, for this particular chapter, uh, nothing to cut up. Right? But we are going to look at the parts of our respiratory system. We're going to look at how they work together and what happens when one part fails. But before we even begin, let's talk about why we need a respiratory system. Okay? I'll invite you just one minute to key in in bullet point. Why you think we need a respiratory system? Once you hear it, you can view all your friends' responses. Why do we need a respiratory system? Oxygen in the air. 
basic structure, uh, may I get you to refer to your notes also, so that you have a rough idea of what we are looking at. Virtual model in hand, and if you want to your notes also, 
Let's go, go through some parts of the respiratory system. So we have a broad idea of what we're going to look at. Okay, first and foremost, air enters your body through the just to you are nose or mouth, right? Okay, but both of them connect to a yeah, sorry, I need to check. Have you studied a respiratory system in primary school before? Yeah. yeah. Oh, did. Also, oh, you all know that inside the lungs are tubes, Yeah. Okay, so you all know what's at the end of the tubes? Very you all hear air sacs before? Yeah. Okay, okay, so you are not totally shocked by this skeletal structure. Okay. So, okay, then you all know the parts are okay. So, when you breathe in, right, they first, you will first encounter a tube. This tube is the? Right, that's a tube, right? When you breathe in. Yeah. Okay, you call of the windpipe. Oh, windpipe, okay. Yeah. Right, now we upgrade a bit, ah. No longer windpipe, we call it the trachea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Okay, then you notice that there are, if you didn't notice, there are two lungs, ah. Okay, it branches left and right, right? When it branches left and right, the first two branches we encounter, we all learn this is called? Yeah, oh, have, uh? yeah. Okay, so you heard this word bronchial? No. Yes. Yeah. Okay, maybe some of you have, some haven't. Okay, just broadly, uh, we need some idea of what the tubes are. Okay, bronchial. These two tubes will branch out even more. Okay, so let's branch out even more. Huh? Okay, we call the smaller branches Bronchioli. Yes, it looks almost the same. Get you to go to part B, part one. Okay, um, one of the things we will see if we uh, to see if you understand the, the direction that air takes, the pathway that air takes is that sometimes we'll provide you a diagram, and they will ask you to just draw the path that air takes into our respiratory system. So I'd like you now to take this particular image. Can you draw arrows onto it to show how air goes in? and how air goes out. Very surprisingly, this is actually an important skill. 
A student sometimes won't know how air goes in and how air goes out. Sometimes they mix up which tube I should go down. Do I go down the pharynx or the larynx? They are done. Feel free to go to Lumos. Okay, for those asking where the world is Lumos, you can find it on several places. You can find it on our uh, WhatsApp chat through description. Or you can go to Google Classroom today. I've also uploaded it there. Then you can go there once you're done to explore the model of the lab. Okay, feel free to rotate it here and there. Explore the various parts. Feel free to dissect the way parts of the lab. So you can look at what's inside. complete this simple task and we'll come back and have a quick discussion. Now I'm going to look at one person's drawing this morning. You all responses. I'm going to look at Okay. 
come back to the classroom mentally. Right, uh, we're gonna look at Emily's drawing. Here she's trying to show the movement of air. I like that she went color coded in here on Excel. The idea that air can go in and air can go out. So red represents inhale, uh, green represents exhale. Notice that Emily made the air go through the same path. Yeah, so air goes in and out the same way. Number two, she made air enter first through the nasal cavity, then it goes down the pharynx. And it goes down the trachea, and it goes branches out the bronchus. Okay, singular is bronchus, plural bronchi. Yes, <laughs> yes, correct. Okay, plural is bronchi. So then after it will branch even more into the bronchial, and finally it will reach the air sacs. Then it will leave out the same way. Okay, so this is one way we could see to understand how air enters and leaves. Another way we could assess you is we provide you the words instead. We scramble it up. We may say something like nose, then after that, oh, um, air sacs, bronchus, so on and so forth. We give you all the parts, then we ask you to sequence it. Yeah? So two ways to see if you understand how air goes in and out. This is important because some students don't know how air goes in and out. Yeah? Some students will choose like the gullet for the air to go in. Yeah, but Okay, I'm going to admit like when I was a kid and I breathe through my mouth, right, I thought the air goes through my stomach. Yeah? Then it's like, if, I want to, if I'm very hungry one day and I want to like, tahan a bit more, right, then I'll be like, mm. <laughs> right, trying to fill my stomach. But I realized actually the air doesn't quite go in the stomach, it goes into your lungs regardless of how you do it. But is it interesting? So then, how do we block out the air from going to our stomach? Right, we do have a flap, huh? and that flap is something that will prevent food from also going in the wrong way. Okay, actually, uh, interestingly, right, choke is if you accidentally get pulled out the wrong way. Okay, then I ask you right now, uh, this tube over here that you feel, is it your wing pipe, your track here, or is it your gullet? Which one do you think it is? Okay, who says it's the gullet? Right? 
this is our net. Okay. One more guess. Any other guesses? Why the cartilage is C shape and not any other shape? Oh, and then why not? Why not just go one two round? Why don't we have cartilage that goes one round? Maybe extends a bit. Perhaps it's for extension. Extension. Okay. So if it's one two round, mm -hmm. can things? Is there space for room for extension? No. Not really. Okay. Any other wild guesses? Hey, would you need it to expand under any circumstances? Maybe when it becomes thicker. Maybe when it becomes thicker. Why would it become thicker? Because the cells divide. Yeah, okay, actually, once it divides already, it's quite. Uh, so, um, it will stay that way. Uh. We don't need more unless it gets damaged. Now, what do you think? Uh, what is in between the spine and the uh, windpipe? Something else is here. One more thing is here. Your gullet. Okay? Remember you have a gullet over here. This way you swallow from. Okay? Oh, okay. So why C shape? Your gullet is here. Imagine you swallow something super big. Make sense now? Yeah? Yeah, so you understand why it's C shape? Probably quite smart, right? Okay, imagine if it's not C shape uh, and the cartilage had gone one two round. You try to swallow something bigger, it will get stuck at the rings of the cartilage. But because it's C shape, it helps allow for you no know, food that's a little bit bigger. Imagine something big goes in, uh, it's okay, right? It can stretch out a bit, push into the trachea a little bit, and it's fine. Okay? So anyway, you don't swallow and you don't breathe at the same time. So it's fine, right? So that's why it's C-shaped. Sorry, your question there? Which one? Okay, yeah. yeah, okay. Right, so that's why it's C-shaped. Okay, so interesting fact. Uh, what, if you look through your notes, I believe there's a page where you also can take this down. Okay, and if you look at into this diagram over here, you can see the C-shaped cartilage. The C-shaped cartilage is this thick portion over here. Okay, then I believe that somewhere at the back over here would be your gullet where you swallow from. Wait, what is the cartilage made of? Okay, 
So, what is a Venn diagram? A Venn diagram is a type of biological drawing that uh, you can draw that rather than focus on drawing individual cells, you find the type of cells present and you just outline the, the area where all the type of cells are present. Anyway, I feel like I've done this with your class. Oh, I've done before. Okay, okay. Before three, yeah, I haven't done. Okay, plus three. Oh, we have all three? Okay, oh, so I've done this already. Uh. Okay, so imagine that uh, if we ask you to draw a plan diagram for this, same idea. Don't focus on the individual cells. Okay, don't focus on individual cells. Instead, just draw the layer of cells. So this one I'm going to do. Uh, Rather than focus on individual cells, as you would do in a typical biological drawing, you just focus on the layer. Okay, you just want to look at types of cells presently. Okay, so that's what a plan diagram is. Alright? Okay? Uh, one of the final parts of today le today's lesson, we're going to look at what these cells are made up of. We're going to zoom in. And if you zoom into the cells, you just click on the next tab, you should be able to see some of the cells present. Okay, click on the next image to the right. Okay, just zoom in to the layer of cells here. You should be able to see some structures. One of the structures, it should look something like that with a big pit in the middle. Okay, this is what the layer of cells looks like. And it serves a very uh, a very familiar function that we know of. Okay. First and foremost, let's introduce some vocabulary. We call these cells lining the walls of our trachea, inner walls. We call them goblet cells. You know what Sherry Potter and Goblet of Fire? Okay, a goblet is something like a like a, like a cup, right? They can store liquid inside. You look at these cells, these goblet cells, kind of looks like it has a pit, right? Where it, can, where it can store things, except it doesn't quite store things in here. This is the site where mucus is produced. Yeah? This pit that you see here, you see a lot of pits, these pits over here, that's where mucus is produced and it's secreted. Ah, oh, what's the use of mucus? Besides being annoying. Oh, uh, actually, what do you hazard a guess? What's the point of mucus uh, in your respiratory system? Perhaps, could it be to remove germs and bacteria? Actually, that's one of the functions. If you were breathing a lot of dust, these goblet cells will produce more mucus to trap all these dust. So they don't go too deep in. Then after you just give a good cough, everything will come out. Well, there was once I was in a country that was so polluted. Uh, when I cough and my phlegm come out, right, it was black. Goodness. The air was just messed up. Okay, so goblet cells produce mucus. If you look at the goblet cells, can you see that there's like a layer of hair? Yeah? Okay, so if you ever see this image again, you must be able to recognize that it is the inner walls of the, the, the respiratory system. Okay. I say again, we may provide you such an image and your goal is to recognize that hey, this is the inner walls of my respiratory system. How do I tell there are cells that can produce mucus? And the key giveaway also is that there are that the cells come with a layer of hair. Okay, so I'm going to draw the layer of hair. This layer of hair, each hair, okay, the layer of hair we call cilia. Cilia is not equal to villi. Okay? Remember what villi is? Okay, where do you find villi? Your small intestines. Your small intestines, what's the function of villi? Increase surface area for absorption of nutrients. Your respiratory system has cilia, not villi. 
you don't absorb air uh, down the windpipe through the bronchus in the bronchioles. Okay? It's really just hair. Yeah? What's the purpose of this hair? Okay, it, it helps to trap, and very interestingly, it also sweeps in one direction. It sweeps upwards. Right? It sweeps upwards. So, if I have your trachea going this way, right, the cilia will be sweeping upwards. Right? So that any mucus that's produced trapping the dust, you just sweep it up, 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 and out. Right? Then once in a while, you're like, then after that, you get everything out of it. All this helps to keep your airways clear so the hair can go in and out smoothly. Any one of you had any respiratory illness before when your whole airway becomes clogged with mucus? Sinus, okay, sinus counter every morning on tap. Uh, anyone got like, okay, those that got COVID before? Do you feel like a lot of left mucus? Yeah? Uh, when you have a lot of mucus trapped in your airways, uh, you, you will find it tough to breathe. That's why you need all these cilia. You know smoking can paralyze the cilia. Uh, if someone were to smoke, this hair uh, can be paralyzed. Can you think of, can you imagine the implications of it? If the hair gets paralyzed, the mucus can't be swept up, it can clog your entire system. There was once I had bronchitis. Okay, they are so bronchus, right? So the disease is called bronchitis. I got bronchitis because I was in canoeist. Then every day after canoeing, right, I don't change and I just go on the bus. With my shirt all wet. Then after that, I did it for like a good month plus, right? Then I got bronchitis, I felt ill. Because when you're very cold on the bus, uh, high likelihood you'll fall ill, and also high likelihood the bacteria will fester inside the lungs. So I had bacteria growing in every part of my lungs. They did a scan and everything. And then the bacteria resulted, the bacteria made my goblet cells very upset. It made them produce a lot of mucus. I tell you, every day breathing was a struggle. Before I went to sleep, I found it very hard to sleep because the mucus was just clogged my pathway. The only time I felt clear right, was when I go for a run. Then after the run, I cough out a whole lot of, hey, keep nodding your head, Masha, you get from practice. Okay. You know the feeling around what? It's terrible. Okay, other than the layer of goblet cells on the innermost layer, one more layer. There's one more layer over here underneath the goblet cells. Okay, underneath the goblet cells, there's a layer of muscle. We call this smooth muscle. Smooth muscles are muscles you involuntarily control. Can you think of instances when the smooth, when you want the smooth muscles of your trachea to contract, to tighten the airways? Can you think of instances that you might want that? Okay, when someone tries to poison you, hey, poison go down which way? Okay, depends on what kind of poison. Uh. Maybe it's a gaseous poison. Okay, maybe that's when you want the muscles here to contract. Any other instances you want the muscles in the trachea to contract, to constrict the airways. When you want to hold your breath. Actually, when you want to hold your breath, just close your mouth. Right. Oh, but uh, if you want to forcefully someone put you in water and water tries to go in, the airways will constrict to try to prevent it from going in. If you choke, it will constrict to prevent it more things from going in. Anyone here has asthma? Where? Okay. Yeah, got mild asthma. <laughs> Oh, my respiratory system is useless. Like, uh, if I there's a lot of dust in the system, uh, in the air, and if I were breathing in, my airways will also constrict, prevent more of these nasty stuff from going in. Okay? So you notice, everything about the trachea, its function is to keep the airways open and clear. Right? Everything contributes to that from the goblet cells that secrete mucus to trap dust to the cilia that sweeps up the mucus to clear it away to the C-shaped ring cartilage to keep the trachea open and sturdy okay, to the smooth muscles 
They are in general relaxed, but can constrict if necessary to prevent any big things from going in. Everything serves to keep the airways open so that you can let air in smoothly and out. this new tool. Rather than individually go to the tap and fill up one water balloon at a time, they sell this thing. You connect this to the tap, right? Just connect it in. Then you switch on the tap, right? All these, like a good 50 water balloons will fill up at the same time. Right? Then once it's filled up, the best part is that your auto just drop off like fruits on a tree and auto tie. Because there's a rubber band over here that's very tight, when it's full enough, the weight of the water balloon will just come off and then this tight rubber band here will just uh, snap it shut. So this is a new way to fill up your water balloon. Uh, yeah? Oh, do this for steam. Uh. So, actually, uh, this structure over here kind of looks like what your air sets are. Okay? You see all these little sticks over here? They are like the bronchioles. When you breathe in, Go all the way to the extreme ends, uh. okay, then. okay then, over here are all the bronchioles branching out and then at the end of each bronchiole, you get one, you get air sacs, okay? Okay, it's at these air sacs, right, where gases will enter your bloodstream. We're going to look at the air sacs right now, okay? On the screen, on tab 2, you can see the, the air sacs. Here is a particular air sac. Here's another air sac that has been damaged. What's the biggest difference between this air sac and this air sac? One has more components, the other one has a big one. This one bigger hole. Yeah? Okay, we refer to this as partitioning. Okay? Notice this one has many, 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 many partitioning. This one has less partitionings. Yeah? What do you suppose? Yes? The one after the first one. Oh, sorry. Where? Like this one. Airways, so airways open and clear. Yeah, and clear. Keep the airways open and clear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I need to upgrade you up. We no longer call, we don't call it Avio, we don't call it air sex anymore. We call it Avio Life or Avio Lux. Okay, uh, a single air sac is called alveolus. This is a plural. This is a singular. Okay, a single air sac alveolus. Many air sacs alveoli. Okay, so we upgrade up from air sacs. Here, I alveoli. Lots of them, right? Then each one is alveolus. But when you look at the alveolus, ah. Uh, Notice that it is there are lots and lots and lots of partitioning, right? If you compare this and this, which alveolus has more has the largest surface area? Left, right? Left or right? Yeah. A healthy lung. If you look at the air sacs, you have lots of partitioning. It helps to increase the surface area. But compared to a damaged, uh, broken lung, okay? I wonder what instances can you end up with air sacs that look like this? Sorry? Okay, smoking is one of them. Okay? But actually, it's not quite what you imagine uh, how smoke damages and cause air sacs to be like that. Okay, so, actually, what happens uh, if you were to smoke? Have you seen smokers cough a lot? Yeah? If you cough excessively, very hard, 
you can actually cause these partitionings in between to break. Imagine if you each cough, uh, you uh, uh, after that, snap one of the partitioning. Uh, uh, again, some more partitioning breaks. So don't cough too hard. Uh. But with every partitioning you break, you make the air sac, the surface area, decrease and decrease and decrease. It makes it much harder for the gases to exchange in this area over here. Okay? Okay? 
I think it's quite meaningful. It gives you an idea of what exactly you are doing every, almost every second of the day, every moment of your life. Right? Some of your rib cage moving up and down. We're going to learn about how our body controls the rib cage moving up and down. We're going to learn about how we get air in and out of the body. Okay? That's the next part of our lesson, how we breathe. And I think it's quite meaningful to know that. Thank you. 